There are a lot of good videos out there made by some pretty smart people on how a multimedia works and how to use them. Unfortunately, a lot of these videos leave out a few key details that are very important to understand. For example, if you don't know why a multimeter might read zero volts when you might actually have 115 volts present, you still have not been taught how a multimeter works. Today, I'm going to cover that more as we go through multiple settings on my multimeter. And we're going to start with voltage because that's what I opened up with. So let me show you a quick demonstration of exactly what I'm talking about before we dive into the details here. I have a 120 volts coming into a switch. It goes through the switch into this transformer, steps down to 24 volts. And I have a little indicator light here that will light up off that 24 volts when we have power present. My multimeter is in the voltage setting alternating current and I have the proper range so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one probe put it on one side of the switch and the other probe on the other side and you can see I'm reading 125 volts there now watch what happens when I actually turn this switch on you can see my voltage drops off to zero now let me show you one more thing I'm going to take my probe I'm going to put it on this metal box I'm going to take the other probe and put it on the 24 volt load terminal of my transformer and you can see I'm only reading 5 volts but when I go to common I read my 29 volts which is just what I would expect to read now the reason why I'm not reading 29 volts when I go to the metal box is because this metal box is not actually part of this circuit now if I were to take alligator clips like this put one on the common terminal of the transformer, the other on the metal box itself. My metal box is now part of that circuit. Now, if I were to try to be reading again, one probe to the metal box, the other to the load, you can see I am now reading my 29 volts. So what's going on here? Now, a lot of beginners mistakenly assume a multimeter simply takes a single voltage reading and then shows you what that voltage is. But that's not exactly how a multimeter works. What a multimeter really does is it takes two voltage readings and then it compares those two readings and shows you what the difference between those two readings actually is. Now this is called potential difference. So what your multimeter is doing is trying to measure the potential between point A, your one probe, and point B, the other probe. So going back to our demonstration where we were reading zero volts across a closed switch when we know for a fact we had over 120 volts there, the reason why is because one probe was reading 125 volts, our other probe was also reading 125 volts. They were reading this voltage off the same exact circuit, and so the difference between 125 and 125 was zero. Another thing that's very important to understand about how a multimeter works and how to use it properly is understanding probe placement because your multimeter needs proper reference points to determine proper potential differences that give you accurate voltage readings. So going back to the transformer, when we were only reading five volts between our load and the metal box that wasn't grounded, what we were trying to do was give the multimeter two reference points that were not part of the same circuit. So for a multimeter, this was like trying to compare apples to oranges. Once we grounded the box from the common terminal, we now made that box part of the circuit and the multimeter had proper reference points within that circuit to tell you what the potential power flow in those two points are. Now, sometimes a bad reading can actually tell you what the problem is. So to give you another demonstration here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my probes, put it on the metal box, and I'm gonna take the other probe and put it on the powered terminal of the 120 volts coming in. And you can see my multi-reader is giving me a weird reading. It's giving me 55 volts. Now, if this box was properly grounded and part of the circuit, I should still read about 120 volts there, but I'm not. So what is that telling me? That is telling me my box is not actually properly grounded. Now that can mean a loose wire connection on my ground wires. Um, and what I found when I traced the whole circuit back was this. Somebody had broken the ground prong off of this cord so that it can plug it into a two prong outlet. And that caused my circuit not to be properly grounded. And it was the reason why I got an odd voltage reading. So your multimeter is always trying to tell you something even if the readings are bad. Now I replaced the cord to have a proper ground on it. So I'm going to take one probe, put it on my metal box that is properly grounded now, put it on the hot terminal coming into the switch and you can see I'm now reading 124 volts. 
Another key point that a lot of videos tend to leave out is that it's always good practice to kind of verify your readings by using different reference points that should give you the same voltage reading. So for an example, I will put my probe on both sides of an open switch and you can see I'm reading 120 volts there. Now I can verify this by also using the properly grounded box now and the terminal and you can see I am also reading 120 volts there. So I'm using two different reference points to get the same voltage which is verifying my readings. Now what I just did is I plugged this box back into our broken cord with the broken ground prong on it and what I'll do is I'll once again do a voltage reading between one side of an open switch and the other and you can see I'm reading 124 volts but when I go from the box to the terminal you can see I'm now reading my 58 volts. So I know I'm, my reading is not confirmed. There's something odd going on there and I need to start looking for a problem. Now in using those two different refer points to verify my readings, what I was able to figure out was that the problem was not with the actual power coming in. Because if I actually had a drop in voltage in the power coming in, I would read that 55 volts either way. But because I read 125 coming in, but only 55 to the ground box, I knew my problem was with the ground circuit and not the actual power supply. So understanding how these things work can actually make you more accurate and pinpoint actual problems when you're trying to diagnose things rather than being fooled by your multimeter and misdiagnosing parts that you think are bad, but they're actually good.